Hey y'all, good morning. My name's Rachel and I'm gardening for butterflies on the Alabama Gulf Coast in zone 9A. And uh, I'm gonna do something kind of different this morning. I'm gonna talk to y'all about um, gardening for monarch butterflies. There have been a lot, there's been a lot of talk about um, monarch butterflies going extinct and uh, uh, what you can do to help them. And um, I was just gonna show y'all um, some milkweed that you can grow and just talk about monarchs. The best thing that you can do to help save monarchs is to grow milkweed. And I have several different kinds here. This is aquatic milkweed right here. And then I have some swamp milkweed growing and it grew huge and I had to cut it back, but it's already growing back. Um, it's the one that's got the pink flowers, but here it is starting to grow back. It's covered in aphids, but you know what? We're going to start the whole process again. There are aphids and then we'll get some predators in here, sucking the juices out of them. That's all going to be good. This is also swamp milkweed and you can see how tall it is. It's in a pot, but it's about five feet tall. And this is the kind that has the pink flowers on it and it looks like this one is about to flower and they're so pretty. Um, and when they flower, I mean, it attracts all the butterflies. This yellow flowered milkweed is probably one of the main ones you're gonna see for sale at like Lowe's and Ho Home Depot. Um, it may be, uh, it may not say uh, milkweed, it may say Asclepius, that's the Latin name. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So the yellow one is the one that I recommend if you have a choice between buying um, any of them, buy this one because they do really love this one. And this is the controversial milkweed. This is tropical milkweed. It um, really loves growing here or anywhere. It's very versatile. It's very easy to grow. The yellow is too, but I don't know why. The, the red is, is really available almost everywhere. And this is the one that they warn you about that carries OE. That's not true. Okay, so there is a bacteria. Um, and I'm gonna put a... Uh, link to an article that you can read about uh, tropical milkweed. There's a bacteria that affects monarch butterflies and it's got a long name, but just to call it something uh, short, they call it OE. And um, tropical milkweed does not carry OE. What happens is it attracts all the butterflies. And so a lot of butterflies come along and some of them may be affected by OE and they leave the spores on the milkweed and then other non-affected butterflies come along and they get the germs. And uh, so it's not the tropical milkweed that's the problem. Um, it's actually that they prefer this one over all the rest and they just come along and get their dirty grubby little paws on it. So what I'm gonna do, because one way to mitigate the uh, uh, just the buildup of OE on milkweed is um, in October, I am gonna cut the milkweed all the way to the ground and let it grow back and uh, without, you know, without as much of the disease. And uh, that's how you can mitigate that problem. You don't have to not grow uh, tropical milkweed. You can do that. Just be a little bit more responsible with it. Just cut it back and um, so, you know, if that's the only milkweed that you can find for sale at Lowe's or Home Depot, then um, get it. And, and I'm going to let you read that article. I have never been good at starting uh, milkweed from seeds. Uh, I've tried uh, quite a few times, but I've given up and I'm just letting it reseed itself. And so here I have some growing right here. Uh, this is my kind of no-go zone right now because uh, I haven't been able to water this or take care of it at all. So it's, it's a real mess. There's a lot of, I got a weed, but okay. So here's this milkweed, but I wanted to tell y'all about some milkweed that I tried to do it the right way. You're supposed to cold stratify it. So I took some milkweed seeds and put them in a tray 
and watered them slightly and put them in the refrigerator for like three weeks and then brought them out and tried to grow them and nothing happened and so I took the entire tray and I dumped it right here at the end of this uh, bed and uh, didn't expect anything I was just getting rid of the dirt and all of these milkweed plants came up and I've just left them I mean it's a lot and they're all kind of crowded but I just left them to grow but uh, this was not on purpose but um, I was just gonna tell you I don't want to discourage you try it try to grow it from seed but mostly I buy my milkweed um, just already growing it's a uh, way more reliable to just buy it from somebody who knows what they're doing <laughs> um, so milkweed is just the main way that you can save monarchs and the reason why is because milkweed is the only thing that they can lay their eggs on and uh, that their babies can eat they can't eat anything else um, now if you're in a pinch and you've got some really big um, caterpillars and they're about to turn into chrysalises and you don't have any more milkweed I have fed them butternut squash before um, they don't really like it but I mean it'll do in a pinch and uh, just want to warn you um, you know how when uh, caterpillars are eating something green well their poop is green but when you start feeding them butternut squash their per poop um, their frass turns orange so that's a cool fun fact right there another way to attract monarchs not just growing milkweed but grow a variety of flowers that have nectar that they love to drink and down here on the Gulf Coast that is pintas and vinca and zinnias uh, they love a variety um, and uh, I've seen them I've seen them on the roses even I mean they're just they're they want to drink tasty tasty nectar and uh, so give them a variety but the other thing that I wanted to say is don't plant milkweed out of fear uh, do it do it because you love it and you want to do it um, I don't want anybody to be in a panic over saving monarch butterflies because you know God's in control and he is taking care of the butterflies and he's taking care of us and um, doing anything from a place of fear is is not I wouldn't say it's productive I think doing it out of love for butterflies and love for people really because if we save monarchs we're saving ourselves because <laughs> uh, if monarchs can't live in this world then um, I don't think we have very much hope ourselves so uh, taking care of uh, creatures um, the tiniest creatures really is something that um, would behoove us all to do and uh, so I'm, I'm not scared I am just um, gonna do my part and I hope that y'all will just for the love of it just to enjoy it because butterflies are such a joy and gardening for them is a true pleasure and uh, I just hope y'all will do it for the love and the fun of it thank y'all so much for joining me on this uh, trip around the garden and talking about monarch butterflies I can't wait to have conversations with y'all about your monarch butterflies and what you're doing to uh, attract them to your garden and uh, just tell me all about them because I love hearing where they're showing up and when they're uh, how they behave it's just uh, very exciting and um, y'all just have a wonderful week God bless y'all bye